Good afternoon. You might have heard that uh, Twitter is for sale. For Wall Street, Twitter is a big problem. You can see these charts are going down. Now, those aren't, aren't charts of Twitter's users or advertising revenues. It's the decline in growth. The problem is not that Twitter doesn't have users or doesn't have advertising revenues. It's that they're not growing fast enough to fuel the speculative bubble that Wall Street wants Twitter to be. So now big companies are uh, one by one stepping up to, to uh, uh, introduce rumors about a possible buyout. What would Twitter look like in the hands of Disney or Salesforce or Google or now Facebook? Now, despite Wall Street's view of Twitter, a lot of us think Twitter is pretty great. We use it. We use it for all sorts of interesting things, for journalism, for finding news, for connecting with each other, stuff that makes us really like it, even though sometimes it spews some really terrible filth. What if we didn't listen to Wall Street about Twitter? Has anybody wondered why the Green Bay Packers are still in Green Bay? It's kind of amazing, and it's an interesting story. It's also related to something you might notice or not notice in this picture. What's missing? Advertisements. There are like two advertisements in the Green Bay Packers Stadium. Now, this has to do with an interesting choice that was made in the 1920s that the Green, where, when the Green Bay Packers began to start selling shares to their fans. And gradually this became a fan-owned organization that rooted it in the community and uh, uh, formed a permanent bond between the team and the community that made it less dependent on the, on the ads and the kind of big city blowout that uh, football today tends to uh, depend upon. What if we applied some of the same principles to Twitter. It starts encouraging us to raise questions about how, if we were in charge, we might govern Twitter differently. So late last month, as the discussions were swirling around about who would buy Twitter, and it was a kind of new uh, uh, spectator sport uh, in, the, in the Wall Street uh, 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 game, I put up an article at The Guardian suggesting hey, maybe Twitter users should buy Twitter. And in this article, I, uh, I proposed some ideas that had been suggested by some people who I talked to who know a few things about this. A partner at a, a new venture fund that's starting up in Europe suggested a model of crowdfunding a co-op, a cooperative business, uh, to buy it. Robin Chase, the founder of Zipcar, uh, talked about strategies for rallying the founders to transfer it over into a different ownership structure since they still hold substantial stock. A blogger who you may not have heard of had uh, 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 went through some detailed exercises to figure out what exactly it might cost for users to start buying shares and, and other users then to pay them back and to gradually buy it out over time. This sounds kind of crazy, but people like Albert Wenger, who's a partner at Union Square Ventures, which was actually one of the early investors in Twitter, immediately responded to the idea and started joining in the conversation of how we could make this work. Now, let's be clear, and I entered this with both eyes open. This is kind of crazy. It's a lot of money. Twitter is still valued with that big, inflated, bubble-like you know, Wall Street uh, valuation, and that's what we're up against. So it's really difficult. But that didn't stop people from gravitating to the idea. Not only did articles start showing up mentioning the, uh, the proposal, but actually a community started forming. So people started uh, uh, meeting in Lumio, which is a decision-making platform uh, developed by a, a worker cooperative in New Zealand, uh, making decisions about what this co-op might look like, what hashtags to use in promoting the idea. A Slack group formed connected with that uh, to manage working groups. So people are starting to, to discuss this stuff in earnest, to self-organize and figure out what this could look like. 
Now, that kind of self-organizing, that willingness to take this crazy idea seriously didn't happen in a vacuum. It comes in the context of a movement that I've been working with others around the world to build over the last couple of years under the banner of platform cooperativism. What we're looking at are companies all over the place that are developing cooperative business models for online platforms. Models in which the people affected by these platforms own and govern them, where they can set the rules and they're also accountable to ensure that the business succeeds. This is happening right in our backyard. For instance, as of this summer, the largest taxi company in the state of Colorado is Green Taxi Cooperative, an 800-member, almost entirely immigrant uh, 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 co cooperative of taxi drivers who are migrating from other taxi companies and from Uber and Lyft in order to own and control their business model. They're also uh, working with a state-of-the-art app. We just had as guests here uh, the, uh, the founder of Stocksy United, Brianna Wettlaufer, which is a stock photo platform owned and governed by its employees as well as the photographers themselves. She came out of iStock, one of the leading stock photo platforms, and uh, uh, took her knowledge and experience into a business model where she could really put the photographers first. How else could these models uh, transform the internet? How could the experience of the Green Bay Packers uh, uh, carry forward as we become more and more dependent on the, the online platforms that determine how we connect with each other, how we find work, how we uh, 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 share things with our friends. It doesn't have to look the way it does now. And uh, this November, we're having our next conference in New York, and, and at that same time, putting out a book, a collected manifesto of sorts, including 60 scholars, entrepreneurs, uh, and, um, uh, and, and workers themselves, uh, imagining and discussing what it might look like to own and govern the internet, an internet of our own. Thank you so much.